Hello YouTube, this is Dakota from Bowtie Media, and today we're going to talk about a little EDM drama. We're going to talk about uh, Steven Zhu. Steven Zhu, better known as just Zhu, Z-H-U, 34-year-old uh, deep house producer from California, has been a bit of a mainstay in the deep house, kind of sexy house world that I like to uh, call his subgenre of music. And honestly, I've been a huge fan of Zhu for a little while now. Uh, ever since his debut album with Generation Y, I enjoyed that a ton. I loved the tonality of uh, Ringo Desert. I thought that was great too. But uh, ever since then... I feel like his albums have sort of got a little progressively worse. Uh, his last four albums over the eight years have gotten a little worse over time with each of them. I think as his music progresses, uh, him, just like a ton of other artists out there, are just leaning more into a commercial sound, a stuff that has more appeal for a ton of people that isn't for your nicher EDM listen. It's not for someone aimed directly for me now. It's aimed more towards just the general radio plays. And that's okay. Yes, I miss his unique flair for atmosphere and tone in his first two projects from Ringo Desert and Generation Y. I've been missing that in his last two. Um, but it's, uh, yeah, it's not necessarily a deal breaker. But uh, this last album for sure that he just came out with, Grace, I thought was uh, was definitely pretty mid. For the most part, Zoo had kind of switched up his deep house production and gone to a more like basic trap house beat that just feels really, really generic, all things considered. And I definitely don't think I'm the only person that thinks this either. If you pop up a Google search and type in Zoo Reddit, uh, you can literally see some of the top most talked about um, conversation points on Zoo's own subreddit. Uh, stuff shows up like, uh, what do y'all think of Zoo these days? My love of Zoo faded away. Um, is it me or has Zoo fallen off? And initial thoughts on Grace, and a lot of people thinking it's pretty mid. So I don't think I'm alone in thinking Zoo has sort of uh, degraded over some time. But hey, that's just my opinion, and those are the opinions of some other people. And artists go through that. They go through the highs and lows and ebbs and flows of a journey. He's been on an eight-year career journey now, so it's only natural to have some highs and some lows. Um... But this is where things got a little more interesting. I don't know if he's been lurking some of the subreddits on the uh, the Zoo subreddit or the EDM subreddit, but um, uh, he came out with a uh, story on Instagram a couple days ago and said this. For fans who are asking, no one co-produced any Zoo album but Zoo. There are different collaborators and A&Rs on different projects and co-producers on specific songs. I also co-owned Mind of a Genius. Up to the merch game when no one else did, combined live and electronic when no one else would, got brands and companies to invest in new artists behind the scenes, move the culture and business forward so that the future generations can be inspired to think for themselves. Stop playing with me. There's a lot going on here. So it definitely seems like Zoo is taking the offensive here. Uh, Zoo has seen some comments online where people uh, aren't loving the new direction of Zoo, and that's why people primarily said no one co-produced Zoo albums but Zoo because um, it sounds like his direction has changed a lot more, and uh, I would say a lot of people saying that it's gotten progressively worse. But uh, yeah, he's taking the offensive here and just sort of going off. But here's the thing. This isn't a good look. If Zoo would have come in here and said, hey, no one has co-produced Zoo albums but me. I get that you guys maybe don't like the certain direction I'm going on, but this is the style that I thought worked best, and this is where I want to take my sound. Could have easily said this and been like, hey, you guys didn't love this as much. Hopefully the next one you'll like more. That is a very, very common response for criticism of music in the specifically EDM world of saying, hey, I appreciate the concerns. I appreciate your opinions, and I hope you guys like what's coming up next. Very normal. But it seems like Zoo has to both defend and then go on the offensive because he's now saying all these different things that he's done. I've done this and that for the music industry and I've co-owned this label and everything I've done is is for you guys and I brought people up from behind the scenes and I'm the first person to do uh, <laughs> bringing uh, live and electronic music together. The, the, no, first of all, that you are not the first to do this. But rather than just acknowledging that, he felt the need to just go above and beyond and, and just talk so much good about himself and what he's doing for the music industry. Upped the merch game when no one else did is a pretty ambitious statement that we're going to get into in a second here. Uh, but then the big one is combined live and electronic when no one else would. That is not... True. I think this is the whole crux of this Instagram story, and this is why this is getting a little bit of backlash from Zoo's community here, is that 
he is putting himself on a high pedestal here. He is saying, like, I am a god, essentially. Like, bow down to me. No one's doing what I'm doing. When this has been around for a long time. You're telling me that no other artist before eight years ago have ever done anything live with electronic music. That is crazy. But just to name a few other artists that have done stuff like this for some time, uh, Porter Robinson, uh, Eric Prides, uh, Justice, Grizz, Maddion, all these artists have sort of done this style for a little bit now. And um, I mean Odeza. You got to talk about Odeza here. Odeza has full bands. They have drum lines. Like they have, they have way more people on stage uh, performing music in the EDM sphere than I think anyone probably ever so far. And yes, Zoo does this as well too. Zoo does this. But to say that you're the like only one doing it is a huge ego that you got to get rid of. Again, to clarify, I think Zoo stuff is pretty solid. I think his new stuff is okay. But dude, you got to chill with the ego. This is this is not gaining you any fans at this point. There, I think there's a really telling comment on uh, one of the Reddit topics of this story um, that says this. I'm just going to read it word for word here. It says, um, I founded the Zoo subreddit in 2014, watched his slow decline as one of the biggest musical disappointments of my life. So much wasted potential. He started with pure passion, creativity, creating a song every week for a year as an experiment. Now he's subjected to exploitative uh, hype beast trend trash, abuses his fan base for money, puts out copy, paste, lifeless music with sensational collaborations, and uh, takes himself so seriously. I just think he's succumbed to the West Coast LA Edgelord uh, competition, and now he's God's gift to EDM. Uh, from uh, For him to believe he's the first artist to have merch incorporate live elements into a show or leverage his influence to promote smaller artists is mind-blowingly laughable. Dude needs a gut check. Every post in the subreddit is about how far he's fallen or how someone's uh, or how delayed someone's vinyl purchases. Meanwhile, I helped create the Porter Robinson subreddit, and Porter has consistently evolved, challenged himself creatively, experimented with new sounds and aesthetics, and shown undying support for his fandom. I can't help but to compare the two artists in my mind. Um, maybe because Porter actually did help pioneer mainstream EDM incorporating live elements into tours. That is hysterical. But um, obviously, I can't fact check that that's true, so I'm just going to take this random person's uh, from Reddit's uh, fact is true and um but yeah if that is true that is uh <laughs> that is uh one person's experience with the zoo that's uh that's crazy and i think even in the context of specifically using porter robinson is great because um porter robinson literally just came out with a song cheerleader about parasocial relationships and how the fans love him so much and how he needs the fans too and it's this back and forth ebb and flow of their relationship and uh how he's coming to terms with uh, what that looks like for uh his popularity and just the juxtaposition between Porter's song and Zoo saying, I am a god, essentially, is hysterical. And I can't speak to his thing about merch, but I did find a comment that hopefully did. And so let's uh, read this one. Um, Lol, this dude is a douchebag. Used to be a huge fan, but his music has been on a steady turn down for years and his ego is disproportionately big. I've seen him four times. The last two were total dog shit. His singing is awful live and honestly, he's only good when other musicians tour with him. Even got on stage with him because my GF at the time uh, bought one of those dumb $200 coats. He didn't acknowledge any one of the 10 plus people People on stage who brought the jacket just looked at us and walked off stage while cocaine model played out and he just stood there awkwardly until security told us to get lost. He's an asshole who's been who's who will ultimately fall into obscurity someday. Meanwhile, the EDM greats will be kicking and putting out incredible music while this also serving and loving their fan base with none of the same ego. He doesn't have he doesn't have near the influence he thinks he does. Um, again, uh, don't know if this is true or not. Just taking this from Reddit, but that is, <laughs> that's crazy and feels on point for, uh, for Zoo's, uh, his, his personality right now. So this video really isn't meant to be like a let's all crap on and pile on Zoo. It's more of a, um, a, a cautionary tale, uh, of egos, uh, and how destructive they can be to, um, an artist's creative process and fan base and how you can really, um, distance yourself from fans by having an ego like this. And so it's a reminder for um, both fans to uh, be wary and, and maybe don't meet your heroes, as they classically say. Uh, and artists, if you're an artist right now watching this, um, just give yourself a gut check. Give yourself an ego check. Um, how can you best serve 
um, I guess, fans uh, in terms of, um, yeah, being being able to have success and find success in your own career, but also um, bring up and uplift the people around you without uh, feeling like you need to uh, be their savior or their god.